This is Black Views, bringing you the Black News. Thank you, folks. How are you today? I have another another story for you today. First, this story comes out of Atlanta, um, and I'm going to read to you. Um, an Atlanta police officer was fired early Sunday following a fatal shooting of a black man, which triggered unrest and new waves of protests in the city. Rashad Brooks, 27, was fatally shot by police at a Wendy's drive through after officials said he resisted arrest and stole a police officer's taser. So, um, after all that that happened, the young man was asleep in the drive through uh, the police officer, I guess, came to uh, cite him or whatever it was. Um, there was a scuffle. He did resist arrest and he stole the taser and he ultimately tried to run. Maybe Rashad Brooks was running for his life. Um, as he began to run, boom. They say here the coroner says that basically there was two shots to the back. An autopsy found that Brooks suffered two gunshot wounds to his back and he died of organ injuries and blood loss. The Fulton County Medical Examiner said on Sunday the manner of the deaths was listed as a homicide. Okay. The fire officer name is Gret Rolfe. I think that's the um, the way I can pronounce it. Uh, R-O-L-F-E. Uh, he was hired by the department in October 2013. A department spokesman said that David Bronson, another officer, that was the other officer on the scene, was placed on administrative duty. And so um, after all this, I have some uh, some pretty shocking uh, content that I want to share with you. Um, so after all of this, uh, the shooting, um, there was some additional content that was leaked out. And I'm going to play it here for you in just a moment. Uh, but before I play that, I, I just want to, this is a, a, a black supervisor, okay, that comes up on the scene after the shooting. Um, evidently, he sees the situation. And so therefore, the fire officer, uh, Mr. Rolf, was sitting, his, I guess, sitting down somewhere. I don't know. But he was approached by this supervisor. And this is what the supervisor had to say. Uh, you all right? No, I'm okay. All right, good, 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 good. All right, we're going to take care of you, bro. I'm just glad you are all right. That's my biggest concern. Yeah, we're good. All right, good. You talk to your wife, you talk to your family, everybody? No, I hadn't called anybody other than the IPPO. Okay. All right, I hopefully we'll get this cleared up. Anything uh -huh. you need from me? Any yeah. update on the on Mr. Brooks? No, I ain't checked yet, so. Okay. We'll get that squared away, all right? All right. But you good. Okay, so you heard it for yourself. All right, so let's let's kind of like let's analyze this situation exactly um, how at least how I see it. All right, young people, this is where you got to start thinking. This is what goes on behind the scenes. You don't know there's a body on the ground. Uh, the officer, obviously, from the video that we saw, it was excessive force. Okay, so we know the facts. All right, so. The officer just shoots a man. The man is dead. The officer is probably thinking to himself, like, oh, hell, I'm about to get fired. And then he's thinking about the charges now. And see, this is exactly what we want the police to start thinking about before they go out here and they start killing black people. They should be thinking about their livelihoods. They should be thinking about their careers. They should be thinking about their family, just like anyone else does on any other job before he does something stupid. Okay? accountability so he just killed the young man two shots to the back he's sitting in a squad car and here's a supervisor a man of, of authority uh, a supervisor you know someone that basically to come along and supposed to give you wisdom and what he's basically telling him is I just care about you not who he just killed now remember the police supposed to care about us they're supposed to be a servant to the community. They're supposed to come into the community and bring order, not confusion. Okay? So here's the supervisor. The supervisor steps up and steps up and he says crap like this. Basically, I you know, I, I as long as you are right. This is this is the culture. As long as you are right. Hey, buddy. You know, it didn't even sound like it was a serious situation. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll take care of that. So what is the protocol to take care of that? Don't worry about that. You know, the officer even asks about 
the status of the person that he just killed. And the supervisor, oh, I, I don't know. I didn't check. Ladies and gentlemen, black men like this are our worst enemies. And unfortunately, they're in places of power. They're your congressmen. They're your police officers. They're your chiefs of police. When not being watched, here are the things that they say. These are coons. And they're put here. And if you listen to a coon like this, he survives off of uh, this type of behavior. It's the only reason why he's there. Being a black, a black man, as a police officer, he should be holding those officers accountable, putting a, a different culture out there to make them accountable. He is in position of authority and power over other officers. And as you can see, this is why the police needs to be need to be defunded. Just like any other job, we have to compete for a position. It appears that in the police department, positions are just given. And there's, and there's money. There's, you have police officers making over $200,000. Okay. And I'm, not, and I'm not hating on, on what they're making. But for what they're making in the job that they're putting out. is fail man. It, it seems like you make too much money. To conduct business this way. For that type of money. You should be a true professional. Is it worth shooting this guy his back for the taser? You didn't want to run him down? Okay. No, he shot that man. Because the black man was not seen as a person. He was not seen as a human. He was seen as a thing, an object, and a problem. So now you have a mayor who wants to be vice president of the United States. Young men and women, listen, the Lord is here and he is putting these things before you so that you can weed these out. These names need to be taken down so you can remember and that you can pass it on to your friends and family and family members. That coons need to be taken out of our lives. They need not serve over us, but we have to first know who they are. Once we realize who they are, then, hey, that's when you do not vote for that individual as a black person. Why? Because they have your welfare not in regard. So you have to open your eyes. And you have to see things like this. This is leaked information here. This is not something you would ordinarily hear in an ordinary conversation. What supervisor? He, he's not even covering his ass. This is the blue wall right here. Okay. And black men are not held in the same regard to the blue wall. But they sure like this to give up that ass. Okay. They want to give up that ass so they can be part of this, this thing. To have a self-worth. They want to be on a team. They want to get a badge and a gun. For power purposes. But even when given. That power. They can't govern properly. And so coons like this. Hey they on the payroll all day. Their whole job is to protect the white man. And to give. Uh, uh, an uh, To make it look like the opposition is 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 in favor of them hey i'm black <laughs> i kick ass too ha 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 shit i bet you this i bet you this supervisor he can't stand black people he hate the way they walk he think they don't walk properly he can't stand you when he see you he wants to be the only negro at the function and when he see another nigga he ready to split your motherfucking neck in front of them to show that he is the the real king American made nigga. Now I want you to pay attention 
See if this is on any news networks. Remember, you heard this on Black News. You heard this on the Black News Network. There are prefla. There are probably a million brothers just like me out here. An army of black media that's changing the narrative. That's giving you, the black man and woman, the opportunity to talk back. To say something other than what we see every day. The black media. The black media is the true media. Because the true media cares about the people. I want to thank you for your time. Please like. Also leave a comment. And also support me as well and subscribe. Thank you very much and I hope you're having a great day. Not one woman or man that has a shield on their chest, a patch on their shoulder, regardless of what arm of law enforcement they come from, will support or defend a murder of an innocent person. And that's what happened. Let us be unequivocal. In all my time, I've never seen a time when not one law enforcement would support. Eight minutes is wrong. There was no struggle. There was no reason. So I know I speak on behalf of every police officer here. It was wrong. We denounce it, and we have from the beginning. I am not Derek Chavon. They are not him. He killed someone. We didn't. We are restrained. And you know what? I'm saying this to all the cops here. Because you know what? Everybody's trying to shame us. The legislators. The press. Everybody's trying to shame us into being embarrassed about our profession. Well, you know what? This isn't stained by someone in Minneapolis. It's still got a shine on it. And so do theirs. So do theirs. What do we see here in this city? We see a video. We always the same words. Go back on your tape. I don't like what I saw. I think he should lose his gun and shield. But then we're going to have an investigation. They got it backwards. Get the allegation. Investigate the allegation. Then decide guilt or innocence, not before. Yeah. This is Black View, bringing you the Black News.